Good evening, all you art junkies. <clears throat> so, what do I have for you today? Today we're going to do something different. Uh, lately I've been noticing that uh, every time that I paint a bird, <clears throat> I will always have a request uh, asking, did I do a demo on this bird? And I keep having to say no all the time. So, I found something um, <clears throat> online. So uh, hopefully I can paint it for you and uh, we can have fun with it. So here we go. Let me just show you real quick what I have in store for you. Okay. Let's get started. So I have an 8x10 stretch canvas here for you. Let me introduce the colors. I have cad yellow, cad orange. Don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but it's just to gray down some of that blue, uh, possibly. So I got cad yellow, cad orange, alizarin crimson, uh, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and titanium white. So those that are new to my channel, <clears throat> I paint in a very impressionistic style. All right, we don't want details. We just want approximately just a just a feel of things. Now you might notice that this time I toned my board, okay, uh, my board, ugh, my whatever, my canvas, and I'm used to painting on wood uh, most of the time too. Um, so I tinted my canvas uh, because I see a lot of warm undertone in the water. So and this the blue is going to work very nice with the uh, warm undertone. You know, you're going to have the cool on top, warm on the bottom. They're going to play off each other. So that's what I kind of did it. You know, I don't always do it, but this time I did. All right, let's get jumping. Uh, what am I going to start with? Uh, I'm not going to start with the bird first. Actually, what I'm going to do is probably start with the background and work through here and maybe do the I was going to draw in the piling as last but I don't know let's see what let's see what we can make happen here let's see what we can do all right for the background uh, the water seems like it's an ultramarine blue maybe a little bit of cerulean blue a little bit of Cad orange, let's throw some white. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of yellow. Nope, not it. <gasps> Throwing a little bit of uh, A little bit more cerulean. Maybe a little bit more ultramarine and white. This is acrylics, by the way, just in case I didn't mention it. All right, let's go with this for now. It looks like about the right color. So it's basically a mixture of uh, ultramarine blue, a little bit of cerulean. And a little bit of orange and a little bit of cad yellow. Now because acrylics don't cover as well as oils do, I may be going over this afterwards we'll see I'm not sure yet there you go so this time I just used cerulean blue and uh, A little bit of cad yellow. 
like I told you at the beginning of the video, I'm not trying to be too precise here. And you're going to see why. Because these are just the base colors that I'm working with here. So I'm going with the with approximate values and approximate colors. Just a tiny bit of orange just to warm that up. Now you don't have to be a slave to your reference photo. I keep telling people that. You could switch things up a little bit. Yes, I just went over what I just painted. That's okay because it's gonna it's just basically a base color. If I really want to make it more bluish the way I had it before, I can just go back over it. The beauty of acrylics. You could go back over what you did pretty darn quickly. So like I call acrylics the honey badger of all mediums. Alright, I see some dark colors here. Let me put that in now, by the way. I see some warm green for the shadow of the piling. Let's just do cad yellow. A little bit of orange. Cerulean, maybe a little bit of orange, more orange. I could lighten this up afterwards. Let's see. Just like that. Not being too crazy careful here you'll see why in a few. So I'm just putting one big mass, okay, because eventually when I put down more of the water, I will eventually cut through this and sculpt this water the way I want it to be, and I'll make it lighter. So right now, just by clearing out all this brown and working with the base color, I'll be better able to judge what colors will go on top of that, how much lighter, or how much darker certain colors are going to have to be. So it's important to cover the whole canvas and then start working. And I usually start with a medium value, like I said to everyone. What I mean by value is how dark or how light, okay? So I'm working with a middle tone value. So uh, I'm able to go either way, uh, very dark or I could go lighter. And remember, this is acrylic, so I have the luxury of doing that. Now, if you're in oils, I probably would start with my darkest darks first and then work to my lighter colors. And sometimes I do use media, uh, um, middle values with oils as well. But um, acrylic affords you that luxury of being able to go both ways, so. Anyway, so here we go, let me. So basically I'm putting in like thin colors. Oof, that's a little bit too thin. to that, some white. There's a variety of blues and grays. And we're going to work through all that in a minute. So up a 
I was just testing the color against that blue here. So, cerulean blue, a little bit of orange, maybe a little bit of cad yellow. Make this light. If you feel your paints are dragging, add a little bit of water to your uh, to your brush. It's going to be darker than the background color from what I see. So let's start putting some ultramarine blue, a little bit of crimson, a little bit of burnt sienna. Whoops. Maybe a little bit of Cerulean and a lot of white. Two blue. Put a little bit of orange to that. Yeah, I think we could get away with that. Let me see. Actually, maybe a little bit darker. Add a bit of burnt umber. Draw the whole bird. color here. Now I'm going to put some uh, white, white highlights so I can start gauging. Okay. Approximately the colors that I need here. I'm just toning down this blue a little bit. I know it looks like madness for a minute there, but it'll come out. It'll come out. Just got to figure this out a little bit more. Um, I'm going to let that dry a little bit. All right. Now let's start working on the water. Okay. So. I see I got some lighter blues in the back oops got some lighter blues in the background so let's put some oh, let's do it over here a 
Now this color over here is pretty muted. Okay, because I added like, it was ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, a little bit of uh, orange. So it's not a pure blue. So which is, should work to my advantage. So now when I'm adding, pure chroma, meaning undiluted. There you go. You can see how the blues are coming out because these colors back here are kind of muted. So. So now I'm just working a little bit everywhere. Give some wave action here. A little bit of yellow to that. A hint of orange. A little bit of burnt sienna and yellow. I see a whole bunch of that here. I got a good amount of color on my brush. Pick up some of this dirty color here. Go in between some of that. Let me add some Darker blues here, there. Basically doing what the impressionists were doing, putting color next to each other and let your eyes do the mixing. See, so just going back over what I did here. Look how fast I'm going through this. Okay, I'm, I'm not trying to be perfect here. I'm just adding variety to some of these waves here. And all the colors that I'm using are pretty subtle. As you can see, they're not, you know, pure colors. You remember all this blue that I had down here? All it does is just basically add. It just adds to the complexity of that water, giving it, a, you know, more of an impressionistic feel and giving it like this feeling of being uh, almost real, you know, wave actions. And what I'm doing is going like a C, like in a C motion, elongated C, okay? And I'm putting, you know, nice thick globs of color on my brush. Do that here too. Go back over some of this yellow that I did here. And the reason why I'm going back over some of this yellow because the paint had time to dry and such as it's a lighter color. So basically what happens now is that as I'm going over with this uh, cerulean blue, it gives it like a muted green color. It's kind of like glazing over what I just did. That's the beauty about acrylics is that you can have like this glazing effect 
uh, over lighter colors, okay? So if you ever want to do that, like you have, let's say you want to mix like a, a certain green, sometimes you can just go over with the yellow first or like a, a muted lighter yellow and then go back over with just the blue by itself and you'll have like this, you know, uh, impressionistic feel as if, you know, uh, the colors were actually mixed that way. So now you can see a lot of wave action here. And the scene is actually pretty, pretty complex. So what I'm trying to do is to, excuse me, dumb down the scene a little bit. I guess is the best way to put it is to uh, really simplify it to the best of my ability. I see some streaks of blues here. Let me add a little bit of cad yellow. Here, here I'm going to have that effect again that I just showed you about adding a lighter color and then eventually going back over it with uh, glazing over it with another color, that being blue. Just a little bit everywhere. And notice, look, look, look how I'm not even just, you know, being careful about what I'm doing. I'm just like, you know, going to town on this. Just let me carve out this bird a little bit. There you go. All right. And I see some. Cerulean and some Lizard and Crimson Make this like lavender A little bit Cerulean, uh, Lizard and Crimson Maybe a little bit of yellow Just to gray it down Okay Actually, let me go with the ultramarine blue and the reason why I'm doing that is because I know ultramarine blue has some red in it so it's gonna give me kind of like that bluish purple feel there you go just what I'm looking for and I used it pretty much pure So remember, when you use ultramarine blue, blue, the ultramarine blue has some red in it. So, and it makes a beautiful purple too when you mix it with the uh, lizard and crimson, as opposed to other reds mixed uh, mixed with the other blues. You know, I mean, granacridone magenta makes a nice purple as well.
here exactly. See, I'm not going everywhere. Throw some highlights here too. Just spacing things out, space them out a little bit. And remember, when you paint with acrylics, um, whatever color you put down, it's gonna come out darker in the end because of the binder that they use, which is initially an opaque color and dries clear. So by being opaque in the beginning, it will show you a lighter color than what the actual color is. And once it dries clear, it, it turns into the, the natural color the paint was supposed to be. So remember that. I think the only uh, company that actually cho show their true colors is Windsor Newton Professional Acrylics because they use a clear resin binder. So what you see in the beginning is what's gonna be in the end. So let me use maybe a touch of orange with that. Gray it down here. And it makes it with some of those greens here. And let's do some of that sculpting that I told you about earlier. See that? See how that separated the two? Now I see some darker greens here, we're going to do that. And I'm going to finish with the water in a minute, I'm just going to let it dry a little bit. And then finish by fixing this bird here. So this green here, this ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber, and a lot of yellow. Maybe more burnt umber, give it this olive green color here. I see some blue, darker blues coming through here, so I'm only partially doing this here. More blue. And I could always add more of the lighter blue across it eventually when it dries. So like I said, beauty of acrylics. Honey badger. Carve this up a little bit more round. Okay. Now some lighter greens. with a little bit of orange. That's just a transition color. So this time instead of using ultramarine blue, I use cerulean blue, which is will be a little bit cooler. Actually, this some ripples. Just like that, ripple, ripple, ripple. There you go. And let's put. Uh, let's start working with that dark blue that I have here that I'm seeing on the side. Oh, well, it's not really dark blue, but it's really like a bluish blue. Let me check this.
Yeah, it's about right. Maybe I live a cerulean. Maybe a little bit of cad orange and white. More white apparently. There you go. Cerulean blue with maybe a hint of yellow. There you go to give it a transition. brush that I'm using if you're wondering I'm sure I'm going to be asked it's a number two um, filbert now let's go with some yellow and a little bit of orange and white maybe a little bit hint of cerulean maybe more orange A little bit of cerulean. Grade down this yellow a little bit. More orange, maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Australian blue. And it's okay if some of this Burnt sienna from the canvas shows through.
yellow. Because here's closer shallow water, maybe actually a little bit of alizarin, more white, a little bit more yellow. All right, we got some more shallow water. Highlights just peering through here. Make some transition colors. Darker shadows of the wave. Make sure if, if your if your paint's not gliding very well, add water to your brush. Damp, at least dampen your brush. There you go. Let's make the darks. Let's let's work on the darks here. Now remember your camera will pick up darks like really really dark darker than what you actually see with your eye so it's best like when you take a picture of a subject make sure that you have like two different uh, exposures Meaning like the, a dark exposure and a light exposure so you can see the difference. just glazing over what I just did here use your finger cut through Now I'm mixing orange, sienna, 
and ultramarine blue to make a base color for this piling. If you want to make straight lines, make sure that your brush is sufficiently wet. There you go, we all use that as a base color. This one is a little bit more on the orangey side. All right, let's do this one. So I'm blue, a little bit of orange. base color. Notice how I keep the colors very muted. And yet you can still see some of the base colors on this. Let's see. Eh, still a little bit wet. All right, you know what? Let's work on the bird a little bit. <clears throat> White. Hint of orange. That's going to be for... Belly. Cerulean blue for wings. Even does an impressionistic style. I have to at least make it look like I have it right. Adding a little bit of burnt umber with this ultramarine blue to make like a shadow to differentiate the different planes. On this bird, sorry, I'm trying to concentrate and talk at the same time. More pure ultramarine blue. So this is just a way to describe white with gray down colors. Your 
telling the viewer it's white, but kind of in a different way here. switch it up here uh, let's use a little round brush this is a number four round and this is by artist loft it's one of Michael's as a Michael's house brand so let's see It's a nice sharp point. transition color. I just use cerulean blue. Just to make like a This is like kind of the tedious part. Mixing these two colors together to make a transition color. feathers coming out here. Okay. And I'm basically, what I just did here was just glaze. It was a lot of water and a little bit of paint, but now I'm going to go with and with a little bit of heavier paint. I 
light touch further describe those wispy those wispy feathers and you want like a nice sharp edge brush to do this A little bit tedious, but it'll be worth it in the end. There you go. There's like dark separation here in the underbelly to delineate. Let's do that beak. Bring it to a sharp point. Please don't make me mess up. Don't let me mess up. Give it some backlighting.
reinforcing some of the highlights. All right. Just use some cerulean blue and some burnt sienna. And I'm letting some of the patterns, I don't even know where I put the color, oh, right here. I'm letting some of the patterns show through. Some backlighting over here. This one has a mixture of orange, reds. Hell, let me put there. You go. Add some warmth next to these cool colors. Add a little bit of cerulean blue to make like a muddied. some greens although it's not a picture but it's okay a little bit of highlight here let's put orange burnt umber orange and white Sienna, maybe some yellow. Just as long as you make a variety of colors. Using that filbert brush that I was using earlier. There you go. Make some green.
highlight give this feeling of roundness I have some old color that was just sitting here. To make this color, I could make uh, use. I can use uh, cerulean blue, a little bit of. burnt sienna you can make and add a little bit of yellow and you can make like this green right here really like toned down green uh, let me add some cracks in that piece of wood make it look old burnt umber ultramarine blue let's make some cracks Remember to go with a contour. You know this is a flat edge, so I made a flat edge and then down, okay? Make some of these cracks here. Now I'm going the other side. Notice the direction. some burnt sienna This is just last minute detail. It's not in a picture, but just wanted to add it just for visual texture, I guess. There you go. I know what I want to do. Some sparkles in the water. And then go back over it again. There you go, just like just like that, wet your brush. And then go back over it with a thick dab of paint. Oops.
just like that. There you go. Put a few dabs here and there. Put a little bit of yellow. And quickly, once you've added those dabs, wipe them off, take a little bit of water on your brush, wipe them down and up, and then just Go back over it, give it that blurred effect. There you go, just like that. Oops. Take some water on your brush and you can wipe it away, some of it at least. There you go. Yeah, buddy. That's the money shot right there. Give it a little bit of that Z pattern coming your way. Let me practice with the legs here. Not quite sure about this part. If you're not sure about it, just take some water real quick and erase it. Try that again. A little bit better. Really, none of it is detailed. There's nothing detailed about this painting. You just think it is, but it's not.
voila. All right, you guys, tell me what you think. Leave any suggestions or any comments that you may have about the painting or materials that I used. Um, and I will try to answer your questions as best as I can. And with that, guys, I want to say thank you. Like I said, and I always will tell you, please help me out by subscribing and hit that little bell button right below the video. That's the notification button. By doing that, anytime I do a live video or any of my videos post, you will know right away. So at least when you get home or you want to drink with your coffee in the morning or in the evening, whatever, you can watch the video. All right? Thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for supporting me. I really appreciate you guys, and I will have more videos for you hopefully very soon. Have a great evening. And thank you.